to go ahead and hit record here. So we are, we're all set. Okay. Um, well, I'm trying to understand what everybody else is seeing. Are you guys seeing a slide and, um, and then video, three video, like four video things at the top? Folks over there in the chat, can you guys let me know if that's what you're seeing? Or they're on the side. Yeah, okay. And it could just be uh, your monitor size or how you have uh, the Zoom configured. So I just want to be sure that you can actually see me um, and that I don't need to do something else besides that. So I think we're good there. Okay. Thank you guys for letting me know. Um, okay. So welcome to the first of um, what is a new Digital Promise webinar series that's focused on adult learning and technology. And um, today we have um, three folks with us um, helping us with our first one. So um, we've got um, Jennifer Vanek and Tom Citron Heisem, who are there waving at you, um, who are from the North Star, Di North Star Digital Literacy Project. And they're going to um, talk to us about their, their, the North Star Digital Literacy Assessment. Um, that they have, and they're going to walk us through a little bit about that and um, tell you some about that. And then Larry Britt from Providence Public Libraries, he's also waiting, um, is going to talk a little bit about um, how they're using that assessment in their programs and what they're doing in, in um, Rhode Island and how they've incorporated um, digital literacy as a whole into their programs as well. Um, so, but before I hand it over to them, let me just do a couple logistics. I know there's still people, I think there's a few other people who've joined as I've been speaking. Um, but most of you are set to where you're muted and your video is off. Um, so if for some reason you're not, um, just make sure, you know, see if you can just find the mute, um, on the bottom bar of, of the Zoom thing here and, and hit mute, um, cause that'll help us. And then um, there's also down there, there's a chat function um, where we can basically post questions, et cetera. There will be a moment like between um, Jen and Tom's um, presentation and what before Larry starts, we'll do a little moment there of some Q and A there. Um, and then again, after um, Larry has spoken to you, and I'm gonna try to watch time pretty carefully just so that we're um, allow for questions, et cetera. But if you have them as, you, as they go, um, go ahead and type them in here and I'll keep track of what those are, okay? Um, I think we're all good to get started and want to take too much time here. So um, Jen and Tom, I will turn it over to you. Let's see how we go there. Forget to unmute, there you go, <laughs> nice. Hi everybody, how are you this afternoon? Can you give me a thumbs up, Patty, if the audio level's fine? Okay, great. Um, all right, let me get to All right. Perfect. Okay, so we are going to do short presentation um, describing the background of North Star and then I'm going to do a quick demo for you too. So I thought. So you guys may need to share your screen. No, oh, I sorry, I clicked it, but it didn't. Not hard enough, apparently. <laughs> Let us know if uh, it's working. Does that okay? Now it, it seems to be fine now, right? Yeah, we can. See okay. It. Okay. Cool. <laughs> So I wanted to uh, talk a, a little bit about the, the purpose of, of North Star, um, its target audience, how it came to be, and, and some of the things that it's good for. So the, the purpose is really very simple. It's to inform instruction to develop basic computer literacy skills, um, digital literacy and computer skills. Uh, secondly, to provide a means for people who um, pass the assessments to demonstrate competency that will help them create a credential that might assist in job search, uh, pursuing higher education, or, or the goals that they might have. And we've always been very consistent in that our target audience is low-level, low-literacy-level adults. 
Um, it's <coughs> the assessment is focused on being usable for about a level three or four learner. Uh, we also, since this originally started um, right um, as, as a result of the Great Recession, uh, our target audience included and still does include just workers who lack computer skills and need to gain those skills for reemployment, and anybody who needs skills for employment, career certificates, or other related issues. Well, we're trying to go to the next slide. Yeah, All right, go. thank you. So, uh, partnership has always been a really key element of the consortium. The uh, St. Paul Public Library was the initiator of the, the initial idea. They came to our local ABE consortium in St. Paul, and this was about 2010, and they were being overwhelmed with people coming into the library needing help looking for jobs. And they needed some kind of a way of discerning which of those people had basic computer skills they needed to go on and do their own work versus those who really needed instruction on the very basics of how to use a computer. So they asked us if we would work with them to develop some sort of an assessment tool, which we agreed to do. We then spent about the next nine months um, having a series of public meetings to design the, the benchmarks or the standards for the first <coughs> set of, of mod modules. <coughs> um, North Star went live in 2012, has continued to grow since then, and it's, it's a real prime tool for use in partnership around the country and increasingly in a couple of foreign countries. Uh, it's used by adult basic ed programs throughout the U.S., including um, we often ask questions um, around using it in correctional systems. It's used statewide in uh, Minnesota corrections. Uh, Community-based organizations use it, libraries, uh, work for centers and community costs, and the, the mixture of organizations that are using it has remained pretty constant, all those categories we continue to get new applications from. One of the things I'd like to stress is that North Star is primarily an assessment tool. It's not in and of itself a curricula, and people get a little bit confused by that sometimes. Um, we see North Star as being very valuable as a way of assessing student progress and mastering skills. Uh, many educational sites will use it as a, a pre-test and a post-test. Uh, we do have, we made a very conscious decision not to develop our own curricula because there were so many curricula that we identified. We didn't think we need another one. But we do identify on our, on our admin site and our website a number of curricula that correspond very closely to the benchmarks and specific modules. Probably the most commonly used one is one called the Lib Guide that was developed and continues to be maintained to the St. Paul Public Library. And that provides web resources for each benchmark um, that people might need to assess. And when people complete one of the assessments, they get a, a brief written summary at the end saying these are the skills that you have mastered and here are some skills that you might still need to work on. So that can be really valuable both for teachers as well as their students that are using online curriculum to learn the skills to know which things they need to focus on. Oops. Oh, wait, I think we missed a slide. There we go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so currently, um, uh, our, our usage continues to grow quite rapidly. Uh, we now have over 315 sites in 33 states, provinces, and com uh, countries. A um, few of those sites, last I looked, there were somewhere over 165,000 assessments that had been given, about 80,000 passes, which has been pretty consistent throughout. And then we also maintain a public site that anybody can use for free. And we just passed the million mark a couple of weeks ago. I think we're now at a million 60,000 assessments that have been given, um, taken just by people who want to know what their skills are. Right. Okay. All right. So at this point now, I'm going to jump in to do um, a live demonstration of at different parts of the actual um, live assessment. Um, but first, I'll just kind of introduce you to it by showing this, this screenshot of the site. And you can get a sense here of the, the range of assessments. We initially started off with um, only having base computer basics, use of the internet, the modules about the two operating systems, email, Microsoft Word. Shortly after that, we added um, social media, Excel, um, presentation software, mostly PowerPoint, and now we have also added information literacy. So what started off as a very grassroots, locally based um, community engagement project um, with very limited funding has grown very organically over time in both its breadth 
and the the types of assessments that that we're providing so i will just jump into one of these assessments oh there's my email <laughs> okay so here is the home oops i'm having a little bit of trouble getting to the here we go all right so here's the home page of the assessment. You can see we've got our little counter here showing how many we've delivered. And um, as Tom said, this, this assessment is available to anybody with the link. So um, you, anyone can just go to digitalliteracyassessment.org and jump in to launch one of these interactive modules. Um, we structured it this way because when we did a survey of digital literacy um, assessments available when we were um, starting, when we wanted to create this one, we noticed that there was nothing that was free out there and that much of what had been developed was at a much higher literacy rate than what our learners needed. So we were, we're using um, foundation money and some public money in the, the development of this assessment and we really had it as a priority to make sure that there was a version of it available for free and to anybody who could find the link. Um, that is a commit that we have a commitment to that to that implementation strategy and we'll probably always stick with it. Um, probably important to remember that the uh, the assessment grew out of um, a group of nonprofits and is now, man now managed through the Minnesota Literacy Council, which is a, a large nonprofit in Minnesota. So we're not trying to make a profit, we're trying to make um, services available to the widest possible audience, but still maintain those services in some way. Right, okay, so um, I just wanna give you a little bit of a tour of what else is available on the website. There's um, information here about sh should an agency or a state want to um, use Northstar in a more structured approach and offer proctored assessments that can result in a certificate. Um, there's information how, about how you do that. Um, I also wanna show you there's a description of the history and then significantly I, I most significantly this is the list of the standards that are integrated into each of the assessment modules so the, our, our community engagement project actually started with the development of the standards and then over time it became really clear that we needed an interactive online assessment so we went with the assessment from there um, there's some special information here for diff for specific stakeholders and then a list of all the sponsoring sites that, that, that we um, that we're hosting and supporting okay so I have a couple windows open I just want to actually I'm just going to jump into the computer basics one right now and I'm going to turn in my volume because there's audio and I'm not sure how it'll come through on the webinar but I want you to have a chance to see it <laughs> Again, let's take a minute to look at the different features of this assessment tool so that you will be familiar with them. On this screen, you will see different buttons you can click and different areas where you can find information about the assessment. Each question is a little different. The way you answer each question is different too. Sometimes you will know different ways to do something. For example, you may know how to scroll using your keyboard arrows or your mouse. You may know how to drag the scroll bar or click on the scroll arrows. But in this assessment, you must follow the instructions and do things the way you are asked. When the question loads, you will hear audio telling you what to do. Listen to the directions before you answer the question. If you are confused after the audio has finished, look at the yellow directions box. This box tells you what you need to do to correctly answer the question. There is an ear button in the yellow box. When you click on this button, you can listen to the directions again. The question count is above the yellow directions box. The question count tells you how many questions you have answered and the total number of so, questions you have um, answered. Somebody just asked about closed this captioning example, and I want to show you. We can you see that we right are there. on question four and there are a total of 33 questions. The bottom bar is at the bottom of the screen. There are a few important mm -hmm. things to see in the bottom bar. Yeah. So the I bottom can't left pause the this. Box. Welcome to the Digital Literacy Assessment. This quiz will test your basic computer skills. To begin, 
click on the green start button at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so I can't, unfortunately I can't pause those while they're, while they're in play, but I just want to take a minute to kind of go over what it, what it is that we just saw. So, you know, at the beginning we have an audio test. Um, that, that's there because we consider the audio to be an important part of the assessment um, because we were attempting to minimize the literacy demands for our lower literacy learners. Um, obviously, it takes a, a fair um, literacy proficiency in order to be able to complete the assessment, but we didn't want um, that to be a huge, a huge burden for for people who are in um, with uh, who are still working on reading, um, so yes, we do have the closed captions. But the 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 point of the audio in each of the questions is to provide a structure or scaffolding or cues um, to help the learner answer the question. So the audio embedded on each one is not exactly what like like the prompt or the command that that the learner is required to, to respond to. Rather, it's it's meant to help the learner. Um, understand the context of the question. Um, now just to talk about the orientation video a little bit, that same video um, is, is included at the beginning of each of the assessments and it, it shows as you saw the layout of all of the assessment screens, shows how to answer the question, shows um, how to skip a question if learners don't understand um, the question. And um, we're basically what we're doing here is calling attention to the fact that the structure of each of the items across all of the assessment modules, as much as possible, is very similar. Um, again, we're working with nascent computer users. Obviously, if they're going to be taking a, um, a, an assessment on basic computer use, and we wanted to lower the technology and navigation demands that were required of the learners to participate. So both the orientation and the parallel structure and the items across all the modules, we hope um, work toward to that end. So um, now I'm just going to show you a couple uh, items. Um, I've actually got, I want to go over to this window. Actually, no, not that window yet. I want to go here. No. It's very hard. They're not labeled. <laughs> okay. So this is the beginning of the email assignment assessment and um, so just a few things so as you can see we have closed captioning available um, and the closed captioning is is a, a text is text repre that represents the audio cue so click on a picture of email so this ear button actually reads the prompt okay and the 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 audio for this particular question is already played through but the closed captioning then play uh, shows the text represented in that scaffolding audio support that we provide so as much as possible we tried to stick to some um, style or design standards the most important one was that we have very clear pages that didn't have a lot of confusing text and as much as possible we tried to avoid having multiple choice questions we wanted our goal was to actually build interactive, non-abstract representations of the skills that we are, or the standards that we are trying to, to um, assess. Um, we built this in Captivate with some custom coding, and we're limited by the, you know, as you know, Captivate's a flash authoring tool, and so we are limited by, or, uh, limited by the, um, the constraints of that software. So sometimes we actually did have to do some multiple choice, but when we did, we tried to make it non-text based when possible. So for example, this question, click on the picture of the email, um, you know, learners are presented with different options and then um, choose Does email, email stand for? Select the correct answer and the quiz will continue to the next question. So here obviously it was really hard. Email's a word. We, need, we were looking for a definition so we had to do. Um, what is email? Select the correct answer and the quiz will continue to the next question. The next four questions are about the difference between a URL and an email address. On the right hand side of your screen, you can see three different addresses. Which address is an email address? Drag the email address to the to box. When the address is in the to box, the quiz will continue to the next question. So this is an example of how you, you heard the audio is much more um, 
like uh, develop then the actual text cue here um, and then you see how we were trying to mimic um, a real interaction online um, this is a generic interface for email we weren't trying to be anything specifically although we understood at the time we developed this that Gmail um, was very popular in a lot of educational settings and actually um, so this layout was actually inspired by the old Gmail layout, which actually um, was changed really pretty dramatically right after we released the assessment. But we, we don't think it's important that this mirrors new Gmail because as you said, we are trying there to- There are it. three more addresses on the right-hand side of your screen. Which address is a web address? Drag the web address or URL to the, what is an okay, email so address? Okay, so I think, like the correct answer. I'm going to close Quiz this one. Um, as you noticed in those questions, I was clicking and dragging, right? Um, so we, we suggest that the order we've laid the, the assessment modules out in the, in the, on the homepage is, is a good order to assume um, your learners might want to approach these assessments. Um, mousing is something that's covered in basic computer use, and so obviously if you can't mouse, you're not going to be able to respond to some of the questions in, in the other modules. Um, I'll just show you a couple items in here and then I'll go on to the information literacy. I, I, I look for by my clock, it looks like I've got about five minutes. Is that right? Can I get a, a time check here? Okay, I'm going to assume five minutes. All right, so I'm just going to show you. The first two questions are about mm -hmm. different kinds of computers. Click on the picture of a desktop computer. The quiz will continue to the next question. So this, the, this series of questions is, is nice because um, part of learning to be a computer user is learning the language of digital literacy. So we do include a lot of definitional items like this early on. I'll Click just on the picture couple. of a laptop computer. The Again, quiz will continue to the next question. You can see it's very clear. We don't have a lot of text early on, and there's not any really much to confuse um, the learner. Again, if they want to hear the prompt repeated, they can click on the ear. Click on the laptop computer. Click on the monitor. The click on the printer. The click on the keyboard. The click on the system unit. Click on the USB port. The quiz will continue to the, the next question is about okay. knowing how to use headphones correctly. Click on the jack where you plug in headphones. The quiz will continue to the next question. Okay, I think you get the idea of some of our design goals when we were creating this. Now I just want to talk for a minute about the newest module, the information literacy module. Get the information to learn what you can expect in this module or click on the audio button to listen. So this module is a little bit different in that it's scenario-based, and it's scenario-based because information gathering and evaluation and implementation or use or prob a problem-solving process um, is, is very much um, based in a broader context than what we could include on just one slide. So this, this assessment is based on the story of three people who are solving problems. This story is about finding a part-time job. This story is about finding um, a, a, a career and or community technical college program in healthcare. And this story is about consumer research. Um, so you're able, the, the learners will, can launch in by, um, Read the information Hearing for the story, story one, and then they answer or the questions. click on the audio button to listen. The Vang family lives in St. Paul, Minnesota. They spent a lot of time at the hospital this year. Mai had a baby, her son Chu broke his leg, and her husband Hua was very sick. Now they have very high medical bills to pay. Okay, so I'm going to skip this. Hua, the Vang family needs a plan to pay the bills. Click on the boxes to select all of the good options for paying their bills. Then click next. So we had, um, again, our, our goal is to lower the literacy demands, even though this is arguable 
probably a, um, a digital literacy skill that where one can't avoid reading and being and, and having some um, a higher liter literacy um, proficiency. We included as much audio as we could just for learners who 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 want that wanted that support. So the learners go through the three scenarios and um, the. Um, this, as with the other um, assessments, when they're, when they're done, learners are able to get a certificate. So anybody who is taking um, an assessment in a proctored setting, when they're done, if they pass, or they have more than 85%, they are able to get a certificate, which they can print here, or they can click here to get, oops, I didn't mean to do that, to, um, to claim a badge. We use the Mozilla Open Badges infrastructure. It's connected into the server and our database. And so all of these assessments, um, if you pass, whether it's on the public version or the private ver or the sponsored version, a learner can earn a digital badge. Um, we don't tell learners which items they got correct or incorrect. Instead, we list those competencies that are um, that you know, on which the items are based. So these are, this is, this is information to guide instruction. Um, we really don't want people to go through the assessment item by item, although there, there's information available in the administrative portal for sites to see which items learners got correct. It, we, we have one bank of questions, um, and so it really inhibits or gets in the way of the validity of the assessment if, if learners are able to practice item by item what's going on. What I remember too is that <clears throat> getting the certificate it isn't the point. It's understanding and being able to master the skills. So we, we recommend that if people are take, have not passed, that there be a period of instruction of some significance before the, the uh, individual takes the assessment again. We've had a few websites who, are, I'm sorry, a few sponsor sites that have just repeatedly um, given the same student the assessment until they get the certificate because the students get so <coughs> obsessed with getting the certificate. And if you take an assessment again and again, again you're eventually going to figure out the right answers. So um, just kind of something to think about. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's see, where am I here? Um, oh, just I hadn't gotten. I, I should have mentioned this earlier, but these are the bench. These are the the sort of umbrella benchmarks of that information literacy module um, that that describe the process that one might go through when solving a problem or a task that requires information and technology to solve. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is just to give you a glimpse of some of the resources available to sites that are um, that, that, that are sponsoring sites. So to become a sponsoring site, you fill out the application. And what that means is that you get your own URL, your customized URL, and you get access to this administrative portal. And you get access to the process by which you can certify computers um, and if a learner takes uh, uh, an assessment on a certified computer, they're then eligible to receive a certificate. You also would um, receive access to your own individualized um, database, which would include the records of anybody that had taken a proctored assessment, or that you would give them the URL to if they wanted to take an unproctored assessment, your, your agency's specific yeah. URL. So that's, that's what we've got. Um, if you want to reach out to us, um, feel free to do so. These are our email addresses, um, and there's the URL uh, with for information about the assessment. I think you have one question there, but I think I can go. Kate that just asks if the badges are printable. Just well, certificates are printable. The idea behind the digital badge movement is that. Um, there are a lot of venues where having a digital representation of, of, of a skill or knowledge that's been gained is really useful. So basically we started with the certificates and then we added badging because um, we noticed that people were adding badges to LinkedIn profiles and um, learners were losing their certificates. We have a lot of, we had some mobile sites, mobile computer labs, and learners just couldn't keep track of paper. So um, 
um, if, if they had a digital representation of this badge, they can link to their, their and, and are shown how to do the badge backpack, they could actually put a link to these portfolio, this digital literacy portfolio of badges um, uh, and link to that on a resume or something like that. Maybe badging is a whole new webinar. It might be. <laughs> um, okay. Any more so, questions? Also, to follow up, um, I will. I'll send in a in a follow up to this webinar. I'll send an email that has everybody's contact and this URL in it too, you guys, just so that um, you'll have it all in one place. Great. Okay. Um, we will hopefully we'll have some. We will have a little bit of time at the end if there are other questions at that point too. So um, now we'll move on to Larry Britt from Providence Libraries. And so the way this goes, I think, um, Jen, you have to click the unshare your screen and Larry, you click share your screen okay. and that should take over, hopefully. Um, and Larry, if you share your screen now, I think it might work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm clicking share screen. Jen, you guys have. Oh, oh, wait a minute. There we go. Good. Nice. Okay. Yeah, got it. Let me just get myself set up here. Okay. So uh, I'm Larry Britt, and I work for um, an agency called Rhode Island Family Literacy, which is um, associated with the Providence Public Library. And um, we have become um, uh, uh, enthusiastic users of North Star here in Rhode Island. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about the initial decision, um, how we use it, um, how we've uh, kind of expanded the Proctor training. There is Proctor training available uh, on the North Star site, but um, when I talk about it, you'll see why we decided to expand that. And then um, I'll talk about some student responses and some plans for expansion here in Rhode Island. Um, so our initial decision, uh, we, we were looking for a mechanism to assess and document students' um, computer skills. And some of this is a repetition of what Tom and Jen have said, um, but um, this is our, our experience here in Rhode Island. Um, what we found at RyeFly and with other groups is um, <clears throat> was that there were classes, but there was there was no tool to assess and measure what students um, what what students skills um, what skills students were strong with, um, and we looked at several different assessment systems, and um, there, there are others out there. There's some Microsoft credentialing system, but. Uh, is really um, at a much higher level. We felt <clears throat> that for our learners um, that North Star was the most straightforward um, because it has a clear set of standards. It gives us an opportunity to do um, pre-assessments that Tom referred to earlier. If, as a sponsoring agency, you're able to um, have a, um, a dedicated URL for your students to take an assessment before they even start. Um, any instruction, and then later on they take an official proctored test um, to demonstrate what they've learned. So this screen, it probably violates all PowerPoint screen rules. It's so busy, but um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about how we use it, and I, I'm assuming all of these slides will be available later, Patty. Um, we have 34 different adult education service providers in Rhode Island, and um, what we've done at RyeFly is uh, we created our own curriculum because uh, we primarily serve immigrants and other underserved populations. And we felt that um, we wanted um, something, uh, a curriculum that had a few more visuals, allowed for a lot of extra practice time. Um, and um, additionally, we um, allow our students to take their devices home. They borrow them um, on their library card. And so um, we're, we're trying to break down all barriers to moving forward with digital literacy. And um, our curriculum combined with device lending has seen, um, has shown a, uh, a tremendous uptick in, in student um, acquisition of computer knowledge. Um, but 
other agencies who are not um, <clears throat> who are not necessarily serving English language learners, they can use the resources that are available on the North Star uh, site at, um, that you have access to as a sponsoring agency. Um, the St. Paul Public Library site that Tom mentioned is really great, uh, I believe, for self-directed learners. If you um, have a learner who um, takes an assessment and they look at that report that Jen was showing everyone, um, you can uh, specifically, you can identify the specific um, need and it maps to a resource for a self what I think should be a self-directed learner to uh, improve their, um, their proficiency in a particular skill. And then there are a bunch of other um, technology literacy um, collaborative resources. Um, if, if you go to the, uh, the um, URL at the bottom of this page, you'll see 13 pages of resources. I haven't even checked all of them out, but um, I, th I think that's a, uh, it's a collaboration of, of folks in Minnesota who share their uh, curricula and, and other resources um, related to digital literacy. Am I right about that, Jan and Tom? Good, okay. Um, so um, with Rhode Island Libraries, um, oh, I think I skipped a, a slide, yeah. Oh no, uh, so that's adult education. Um, we're also using North Star right now in 12 different Rhode Island libraries. Um, as with adult ed, we have about 34 libraries in Rhode Island. There seems to be 34 of everything in Rhode Island. Um, and at the libraries, we have walk-in assessments at, um, oh, there's a typo there, at our learning lounge, library learning lounges. Um, and the learning lounges are places where any adult can come in for any academic or employment need. And um, we also offer um, North Star uh, assessments, Proctored North Star assessments in the learning lounges. Other libraries offer the assessments by appointment. Um, and I think um, what I'm hearing from the libraries is that they're using the North Star standards to inform their library um, computer literacy classes. We also in Rhode Island, uh, there's one, one job core group that's using the assessments to assess youth readiness for employment. Um, and then finally, the Department of Health and Human Services, um, we're providing some, uh, some classes to them on uh, digital literacy um, that addresses staff readiness for using computers. And um, th there's a developing use there and acceptance, but right now they're just using the public site. So um, <clears throat> one unique thing that we did in Rhode Island, I I, I'm assuming it's unique in Rhode Island. I haven't heard of any other states doing it, but we expanded the Proctor training because we really wanted to embrace this and make it a, um, a powerful uh, tool and uh, powerful um, uh, uh, indicator of, um, of competencies. So um, we needed a single point of contact. That's me. Uh, I call myself the North Star Czar. Um, we also wanted to um, be able to assist and encourage um, agency adoption across the state. Uh, for any of you that work in adult ed, um, you may know, you may have the same experience that we have in that um, a lot of practitioners have been in the field for a long time. They're retired teachers um, and all well-meaning people, but they're not um, necessarily computer literate. And so, We've uh, really encouraged agencies to 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 get on the uh, on the bandwagon with um, using technology in the classroom, and as part of that, um, each uh, agency is required now to have all of their staff, both teachers and administrators, um, uh, take uh, four of the assessments and pass them as part of their. Um, uh, as part of their uh, employment requirement. Um, we wanted to ensure that we'd have a consistent process all across Rhode Island, that every proctor is doing the same thing. 
We have Proctor's sign and date, the Learner and Proctor Code of Conduct. And um, here in Rhode Island, it's, uh, it's considered um, a piece of um, an adult educator's professional development. And then finally, um, this is going to be a foundation for an upcoming uh, Rhode Island Department of Education student requirement for digital literacy. So we're going to be requiring our students to, um, to sh demonstrate their proficiency in these skills. And uh, it just makes sense that educators know what their students are, are expe what's expected of their students. Um, so the student and patron response so far, we've, we've done about 4,000 proctored assessments in the last two years. And that's not even uh, a full-blown usage. Uh, we still have some agencies that are not um, using it with their students, but um, as we move forward, they, they will have to use it with their students. Um, with adult learners, um, I think uh, a student response is that it, it's, it's a nice, um, sensible sequence of learning um, about computers. But it also, um, <clears throat> there's the ability to jump in where, where appropriate if you're a more advanced learner. Um, the other thing that adult learners love is this tangible record of achievement. And Tom, I know that you said it's not, not all about the, um, the certificate, but wow, uh, it, it's a game changer in the classroom. The, uh, I, uh, in addition to what I do with North Star, I teach a um, beginner, um, basic computer and computer um, skills class for English language learners and there's a um, trepidation there's um, uh, suspicion and there's all the things that go with uh, adult learners um, coming into a new environment but when that first student gets a certificate it's a game changer and um, everyone wants to everyone aspires to to do the same and and to, and to get the next one and the next one and the next one so um <clears throat> I, I i i just think it's a great thing in the class setting um there's also as you mentioned it's a credential for employment um and even more than that um <clears throat> the certificate and as well as the um the standards and um, a great tool that comes with uh, uh, available if you're a North Star sponsoring agency are um, some uh, interview um, interview uh, an interview handbook that um, gives students the, the language they need to kind of articulate what these um, certificates mean so that when they go into a um, an interview um, and the potential employer says, well, what, what do you mean you have, uh, you can use Microsoft Word? Well, they have the certificate to show it. And they've also practiced in class um, interviewing uh, uh, and talking about what the certificate means. So that fits into the uh, your byline of learn it, know it, show it at North Star. Um, with library payment, Patrons, uh, what we're seeing more are um, people coming in who want to con con confirm that the skills they have really are strong. And um, it gives them an opportunity to identify the gaps in their skills. Again, that, um, uh, f that report of uh, what you got right and what you got wrong is helpful um, to those to patrons coming in. And for them as well, it's a credential for employment. Um, our plans for expansion right now are that um, all adult education practitioners and administrators will be certified in uh, four of the assessments by the end of June this year. Um, so that's really not an expansion plan, but um, moving on to the next fiscal year, we're anticipating that it will be a requirement that all adult learners um, are certified in some number of assessments by the end of um, June in 2017. Um, we're also looking to expand to more than the 12 libraries that are currently uh, sponsoring agencies. Um, a big thing for us is employer buy-in. Um, it's a missing piece 
worlds. Um, but uh, we're trying within our own world to, um, to kind of drive that by making it a requirement for uh, to be hired in a, uh, by any adult edu education agency now, it's clearly specified in the um, job employment notice that within two months of of hire, um, folks need to pass um, four of the assessments um, to, in order to retain the job. And then we have in the past uh, we've worked with our past governors, uh, what was called the Governor's Workforce Board. Now there are a variety of workforce committees and we're looking to get um, some presence there and buy-in from empl employers that sit on those committees. The other thing um, for us has been, uh, we're, we're interested in digital badging and North Star really has been the jumping off point for that. Um, we've developed um, yet a, a, a badging system of our own that relates to um, uh, accomplishments uh, with CASAS tests and um, our, our first uh, issuance of badges will be to all of the proctors I've trained. They'll get their first digital badge and hopefully um, that will be a motivator to uh, embrace the micro-credentialing uh, world. And then um, finally, um, I sit on a technology advisory committee here in Rhode Island, and um, we're really trying to wrap our hands around what um, digital literacy means. And um, we've been looking at the, the latest information literacy module from North Star as one tool to help us um, uh, define that digital literacy. And it's really hard to get your, your hands around a definition for digital literacy. Everyone has a different opinion on it. So that's what we're doing here in Rhode Island. Um, one thing I did leave out was um, key to uh, my classes anyway, is that uh, we, we budget into um, our annual budget uh, enough money to pay uh, digital literacy core members. And those are people who are former students, students from former classes. And um, they help me in upcoming classes, and we pay them a small stipend. And um, it's a, a great um, a job opportunity for them, uh, a, a way for them to, to gain some experience here in the United States and also to get a reference from me. And it's worked out great, and they've helped us with um, with other things as well. They, it's just kind of a, a way to bring them into our family. So, Patty? Nice. Um, so there's a couple of um, questions from Jen. Jen, you could actually, if you... Um, why don't you unmute and go ahead and ask a couple of these, and then, and then we'll open the rest of this up for... Um, for questions as well. All right, yeah, Larry, that's great. It's really fun to hear what you guys are doing. Um, so as you guys get anecdotes from employers or student interaction with employers, we would love to be able to collect those too. Because, um, you know, although we can say that it, we have a couple um, AmeriCorps programs that are using digital, the, the North Star assessment, and they have outcomes measures that show who gets jobs or not, but it's really hard to know why an employer hires somebody. Um, really, you need anecdotal evidence, like support or qualitative data to, to support that. So as you're collecting that, I would love to have it. Um, and so I'm wondering with this push with teachers and, and such a big push statewide with all of your adult learners, what kind of, uh, is, is PD for these teachers also ramping up? Or in what way are you structuring PD around the skills that teachers are gonna need to have in order to teach the uh, digital literacy to a broader range of students? Um, <clears throat> well, um, uh, let me think. How to, uh, I think, um, can you repeat the question again? I got, I, I got lost on the um, sharing my screen and muting and all that. Uh. The affective learning filter. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, no, I'm just wondering, you're, so it's, it's really cool to see such a push to, to 
make sure your teachers have the skills to, to, to do this like immense digital literacy instructional effort. What, what are you doing to support them? Okay. Um, yes. Um, the state um, has made it um, part of their um, RFP for the coming year that uh, agencies do commit to um, using technology in the classroom and documenting how they're using it in the classroom as well as um, we're really trying to uh, put together a, uh, uh, a medium for sharing um, sharing resources across the state. Um, uh, part of this technology advisory committee is working on um, maybe a learning management system, maybe not, but uh, it's a committee so we go round and round and round. Um, but there is support from the state because um, we had a technology breakthrough grant that lasted a couple of years, and many agents, most agencies got um, significant funding to invest in technology. And so now that they've invested, um, as you well know, it's um, it, it it's not useful to just hand tablets to an agency without any direction. So the state is um, really trying to. Um, uh, come up with common platforms to use, common curricula to use, as well as um, sharing uh, across the state. We have monthly tech camps that um, representatives from each agency come to um, and share their um, their technology, um, their technology tools, and and the things that they're doing in the classroom. Does that answer your question enough? Yeah, yeah. I just wondered. I I figured there had to be something because you, yeah, as you as you as you say, yeah, you can't just throw technology out there, and yeah. people can make good use of it. And then I just had one other question: Are you guys using Credly for you organizing your digital badges? What are you using? Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah. We and have. Uh, as you know, um, Mozilla is um, there. Involvement is has sort of um, they're backing off from their involvement. So um, yeah, we decided to use Credly. And any any complaints? Do you love it? What do you like about it? Um, well, I had an intern develop it, so I am a, I am a learner. Uh, but I do love it, and uh, I, I after um, after my intern developed it, um, he quickly showed me how to um, generate badges, create new badges, and I, I found it to be very intuitive. Great. So anyone else have a question? And actually, if you want to go ahead and just ask the question, you can just unmute yourself. Let us tell us who you are and um, ask the question. You have. Anyone? Or Carissa, did you have it? Did you want to add anything? Uh, yeah. Um, I had a question as to, um, for Jen and Tom, hi there, uh, what the benefits are for um, doing like a proctored assessment versus, or a, being a sponsor site versus using the public site. Um, could you review that a little bit? I, I think it depends entirely on the purposes that people want to use it for. Um, if receiving the certificate is meaningful to the student, which we find it, it is, if that's needed um, either in an ABE program or uh, for employment reasons or for other reasons, the, the proctored assessment is probably the way to go. It has um, more validity. Um, it's taken, there's, a, there's somebody present, there's certain rules about how it's taken to make sure that the, to lend some authority to the outcome so somebody cheated and, and that sort of thing. Um, it also puts um, the data about that student into each sponsor site's database, so you have a way of calling up all the results for students that have taken it. Um, the public site, I think, is more that people are just interested in assessing their own digital literacy skills, just as they're kind of interested in it. Um, for no, you know, it doesn't really go much beyond that, and they don't necessarily need, nor are they looking for a credential of some sort. Oh, sorry, there's a question here that, I, that might, other people might be interested in, although it's a, a private one. It said, is there any way to make program-specific changes or adaptions, adaptations to any of the assessment data? Um, to the test, the actual test. Yes, any of the assessment. So, meaning the modules, you think? 
You mean, can you customize the modules for your specific organization? Is that what the is that what you mean? I, I assume that's what you mean. Um, we have we have engaged in that kind of work. Um, it is technically possible to take the file, the package of files that define the assessment, and throw it into your own server. Um, so you could technically run it on an intranet, or you could, um, I mean, even maybe figure out a way to just have it on, um, I don't know, I'm not gonna say anything more than that, but it, yes, that is possible, but it would have, when we did this once before, it was for the, um, for CESOL, the Center um, for Studies of, Study of Adult Literacy, I think it's, at, it's in Georgia, and they they wanted to take one of one or two of our modules and kind of package a couple of the assessment items together to make one special assessment. And it took a lot of effort on their part. I mean, all we have to do is share the files, but once you get them, then you have to do that. It's a pretty complicated sure. process, so. Yeah. So you, I'm, I'm curious, where are you guys going, where, where are you going next with, with the assessment? That's a really good question. In fact, we're having a team planning meeting tomorrow afternoon about that very question. Um, well, to be really honest, when we started out, we thought this was going to be something that was of use, hopefully, to Minnesota programs. We didn't have any huge ambitions to go elsewhere with it. It really has caught on, I think, because it meets a need and is being used um, by more and more sites. I mean, the number that are coming, the number of sponsor sites, applications we're receiving is increasing still. Um, so we've been, um, so far, we have been very uh, intentional about adding additional modules as time went on and, and as we had the resources to develop them. Um, we're going to be talking to you about kind of what is our longer term um, goal. There are some limitations in the Captivate authoring software that we use. The files are huge. <laughs> They're huge. Because <laughs> all the media. They only allow us to show one way to answer each question. We all know there's usually multiple ways to have, answer each given question. Um, they also, we only have one set of questions. There's, there's one module for each area, and we, we don't have alternative versions. So we're looking at um, some alternatives and what we might do in the future something that would be HTML5 compatible, that would be easier to, to modify and change and evolve as time went on. That's a fairly expensive proposition, so part of it will depend on whether we can um, raise the grant money that we would need to do that. It would um, basically be a home second pop project. Right. I mean, probably maybe even more expensive than the first one. And we'd like it to be, um, mm -hmm. that would also allow it to be mobile device friendly, which it is not right now. So um, some of the modules, mm -hmm. like basic computer, it wouldn't make much sense to access on a, on a phone but something like information literacy would be valuable to people, whatever devices they were using. So that's something we'd like to do as part of that process. Nice. So you don't, so you intend to, to you want to keep growing it is, is what yes. we want. Yeah. And we want to facilitate use. Um, and the flash, I don't know. You guys are all probably aware that Chrome is going to stop doing the automatic embed for flash. Mm -hmm. So that means that, it, you know, the, the assessment will behave very much like it does in, the other browsers where you need an updated flash player to make it work and so th that's just a it's a speed bump that gets in the way of a lot of people moving forward with the assessment so it's like another hint to us that we need to do try to figure out how to do this shift away from the flash authoring tool yeah super interesting okay anybody else have Oops. one question that somebody had submitted to us is um, about the validity of test items and whether we were collecting data on that I wouldn't say we've done a scientific study, but we've been tracking results over the last four years now. And the percentage of, of passes and failures has been really consistent in multiple locations and over time, which um, we think tends to, in a non-academic way, suggests. but still valid way, suggests that there's a, a fair amount of validity. The other thing we can't control is the testing environment at the 300 plus sites. So, you know, arguably there's a lot at stake with validity and the way that the test is proctored. Um, so, can't answer that question definitively. Okay. Okay, so we've gotten to one o'clock. We got here quickly. Um, I want to thank Jen and Tom and Larry for, um, for, for, for being a part of us today and, um, and for all the rest of you for coming in, um, participating also in the webinar. Like I said, we'll, um, we will send out a follow-up that will actually have a link to this, to the recording of this, and then all of our, all the presenters' um, contact information and a, and a URL for the, for the assessment. Okay. Thanks for organizing, Patty. All right, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.
Bye. Bye. Bye.